When didn't he invent a threader? He did. He and my grandfather invented what he called the Grim Eight, G R E M Eight, which was a self oiling hand die threader that he invented, where you would put the oil in the handle of the of the, of the uh, apparatus. And he went through the whole patent process. I've actually have it hanging in my office with all the patent information, everything. The only bad thing about it was is right after he invented it, they came out with the electric, <laughs> with the electric pony, so you could do all the stuff that he was doing manually, electronically. So it didn't really, it didn't sell a whole bunch. Well, and I mean, at the time, people were having to do things differently without his device. It was not Correct. far out. I mean, it, it was not this thing that was quickly made and then no. Prior to his invention, it was a two-man operation. You had one man that would hand thread, and one man had to oil it to keep the the, the thread, the teeth of the thread, from burning, and, and and getting too hot. So it was a two-man process. Whereas when he what he invented, one man could do the work, and there was just a button on the end of it that he could push that would self oil the machine. So he kind of short circuited the the process for it, and it was it was going to be a, a big hit. <laughs> But the electric vice came along, and thanks to Rigid, he didn't do too well after that. <laughs> but, I mean, I still think, like, designing that concept and coming up with something like that is, is fascinating. I mean, nowadays you think and you look at the how it's done, it's all electric, and right. nobody sees anything that. But taking yourself back into that time period is it was revolutionary to the point where it was saving. You almost were able to do twice the amount of work with one person threading and another person running pipe. Correct. You, it, it was a big time saver. The only thing that I can relate it to back in that day was everything was done with cast iron pipe and all the joints were made with lead joints. They were all oakumed and lead joints. And then from there, some individual and said, Hey, we can put a gasket in these things and it would work twice as fast. And he was correct. So what my grandfather did was revolutionize the pipe threading industry, which was the same thing that a gentleman did with lead joints to gasket joints. And now we have PVC and glue, and so it's <laughs> now you have, you know, pro press. There's 16 different ways you can do things nowadays. It's, it's you feel like you've been cheated when you come through the old school, and now you have these kids coming up that couldn't make a lead joint if they had to. But that's, <laughs> that's part of the game. That's what I was about to ask. Is what did, in talking with Philip, who is my brother, who is now running the plumbing company with you. What were the differences in the testing for when you sat for the exam? Because there's, from my understanding, there's a written portion of the exam and there's a practical portion of the exam. Correct. The written portion, I don't think has changed much. It's mostly the code. So we both had to learn the codes in that type of, uh, you know, questioning. But in the written part, when I took it, we had to make a lead joint. You had to make a solder joint. And you also had to put together a flush valve from the New Orleans prison that was probably 1930-ish vintage that they gave you a schematic from that didn't even look like the, the thing that you had. And as far as I know, Philip didn't have to do that. They had to do a little rough in with some PVC pipe, take some measurements on some things. And they did have to make a, a solder joint, but nothing with lead or anything like that. Yeah, I mean, even, so. even when I was helping you when I was 15, 16, 17, and 18, I learned how to solder right when we were running copper pipe, doing stub outs and all that for houses. Mm -hmm. But now, I mean, the technology that y'all are using is ridiculous. Well, there's pecs. And so you have, you know, fittings that you don't even have to, they just, you know, snap together. And then we have some machinery that's called, we call it pro pressing. And you can actually, we can take a line that still has water in it. That's not even finished draining four inch carbon steel. And we can put it together without it being dry. So, and that is, I mean, I remember we would have to do pressure tests and if there was a leak, you'd have to drain the entire yep. building, yep. get it completely bone dry and then sit there with a torch, get it <laughs> glowing hot and then run the flux and then run the solder That's correct. before you could do anything. So it was something that y'all can do now. And I assume less than two minutes. Oh yeah. It's, it's very it was quick. was a two hour process. It's, 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 it's amazing the speed at which things are done now. And I guess technology is what it is and it's going to continue to improve. But, uh, you know, there's still places where the old school has to come in <laughs> sure. and, and they still have to call on dad to go in there and, and show them how to do that. Cause they, they've never seen some stuff before we,